This lecture is going to be on the Earth's grid system. This is lab exercise one, and we'll be looking at activities one, two, and a little bit of three during this lecture here. Essentially, we're looking at the Earth's grid system. This is a collective term for mapping the Earth to locate specific points on the Earth's surface. Latitude or coordinates, coordinates that determine distances and degrees from the equator. So the equator is zero degrees, and these run horizontally. You can think of it like a ladder. And longitudes are coordinates from the prime meridian, and these run vertically. There are five primary parallels. The, pri the one that most people are familiar to is the equator. This is zero degrees north-south. This divides northern and southern hemispheres, where we also have the two tropics, Tropic of Cancer in the north, northern hemisphere, and the Tropic of Capricorn, 23.5 degrees in the southern hemisphere. Notice both of them are 23.5 degrees north and south, respective to the equator. But there's also the Arctic and Antarctic circles. Arctic Circle is 66 degrees, 33 minutes, and 44 seconds north, and the Antarctic Circle is 66 degrees, 33 minutes, and 44 seconds south. These are simply meridians that are longitude lines that, that do cross over at the poles. These are different than parallels that never cross. The prime meridian here is zero degrees east-west, and the international date line is 180 degrees from it, so it's on the other side of the Earth. Here you can see that the, the lines that we've noted, the equator divides into Earth, divides the Earth into two hemispheres, north and south, and the prime meridian divides, and the international date line divides the Earth north-south. So essentially we're using this very concept of numbers we need to make sure we correlate. That latitude, as we move north-south, it's 69 miles or 111 kilometers per degree traveled north or south. It does not matter. And here's an example, if I travel 10 degrees, it's 10 degrees times 69 miles per degree for 690 miles. However, longitude lines starting from the prime meridian in Greenwich, England, they vary in distances from one another. And this is where you will find that this occurs due to mapping a sphere. As you near the poles, the longitude lines get closer. Where table 1-1 kind of reiterates that very point. At the equator, a one degree by one degree map would be pretty square, right? 111 kilometers by 111 kilometers, or 69 miles by 69 miles. But the further I get, and this is what this is showing, the latitude as I move from the equator, move away from it all the way up to 90 degrees, you'll see that the distance between them gets closer together. And I'm just kind of walking you through the visual display here to where eventually at 90 degrees where the lines intersect one another, all longitude lines intersect at the poles, there's zero distance, they all come together. So you'll see as this example problem denotes, traveling north-south is predictable at 69 miles per degree. Where traveling east-west, you have to go to the relative latitude line and calculate using the tab uh, table 1-1. So here's a way that we're going to further subdivide degrees into minutes and seconds. And these are really just kind of giving you more precise values. There are 60 minutes in each degree, and each minute is divided into 60 seconds. So the example of Washington DC, a precise measurement would be 38 degrees, 53 minutes and 23 seconds north of the equator, and 77 degrees, zero minutes and 27 seconds west of the prime meridian. So we use our north and west, these are simply relative to the equator and prime meridian. And minutes and seconds are further subdivisions of degrees and as each degree of latitude is 69 miles, right, 111 kilometers, a minute of latitude is roughly 1.15 miles, and a second of latitude is 0 0.02 miles, or just over 100 feet. You'll need to keep in mind that a degree of longitude at the equator is approximately 69 miles. So the same size as a degree of latitude. But as one travels toward the poles, the size decreases to zero. We're at 45 degrees, and you can find this on table 1-1, a degree of longitude is approximately 49 miles apart. So because degrees of longitude vary, so do minutes and seconds. So it's not the same equidistance part as latitude lines are. So here's a practice problem converting 121.135 degrees into min degrees, minutes, and seconds. And we had a chance, you can check this out on your own. You can pause this and kind of read through here. I don't think I really need to. So here's civil versus solar time. Civil is how we set our clocks and how we have our time zones. And solar time is simply relative to the Earth reaching its zenith, or its highest point. <clears throat> if the Earth rotates counterclockwise when viewed from above the North Pole, we know that it takes 24 hours to complete one full circle, and this is our solar day. Since the Earth rotates through 360 degrees in 24 hours, we can relate 15 degrees of meridians that count for one hour of time. 
which is the same as one degree of longitude for every four minutes. So these are a couple of numbers we'll need to know. 15 degrees per hour, or four minutes per one degree. And these are interchangeable as well. So we will be able to reference the prime meridian since, it's a, since a location east of it is later than the location west of it. Where civil time zone is defined by whole hour zones. And these are the zones that we live in. We live in the central time zone. Each time zone includes 15 degrees of longitude or meridians. So our central time zone is the central meridian and it measures 90 degrees west. So here's our central time zone. But our entire time zone incorporates 90 degrees west plus 7.5 to the west and minus 7.5 degrees to the east. So really we look at our boundaries of the central meridian as 97.5 degrees west to 82.5 degrees west, which both of these are west of the prime meridian, which is a total of 15 degrees. And that's where these 7.5 measurements come into play. Each one of these little subdivisions is 7.5 degrees. So here are our civil time zones, and we're in the central, uh, central time zone, central standard time. And the eastern standard time is an hour later on the clock, where the mountain time zone is an hour earlier and the Pacific time zone is actually two hours earlier, and that's why TV networks are constantly saying, oh, it's so-and-so Eastern Standard Time, and you actually have to subtract an hour from that. AM stands for ante-meridian, and PM stands for post-meridian. Meridian is Latin for midday. So ante is before, and post is after. So AM is used for time between midnight and midday, and PM are times between midday and midnight. And the last topic, which is activity three in lab exercise one, are great circles. Determining the distance between two places on Earth along a great circle, it implies that we are dividing the Earth into two hemispheres, and that's an important one, and this takes a little bit of practice. There's a little bit of skill to that. But essentially, if we find X to Y here, a distance on the Earth, and we use a great circle where we divide the Earth into two hemispheres, we then just correspond that degree value along the equator from the prime rating, because this is zero, and this will give us a value that we can multiply. So here, if it's 30 degrees, I can take 30 degrees times 69 miles to find the distance between X to Y. Or if it's in kilometers, I can take 30 degrees times 111. But essentially the string we wanna do, what we wanna do is create a great circle here. And then here's the practice problem you can try on your own and I've given you the answers here. So with having said that, good luck. See you soon.